As you can see, I have already created the flowchart representing our algorithm from the previous video. A quick definition for a flowchart, it is basically a visual representation for an algorithm. So it's basically a visual representation of a step-by-step -step process that will lead you to a solution. So flowcharts are easier to understand. So if you're trying to share your solution with someone else, it is better idea to show them your flowchart as opposed to showing them your algorithm because it's much easier to understand and conceptualize. Once again, this gives us an opportunity to brainstorm one last time before investing any time or energy into writing actual code. In reality though, you might only have to create a flowchart and skip the algorithm creation part. You might just do it in your mind and then go ahead and create a flowchart and then go ahead and create a program. But in my course, I decided to show you all of the steps so that after you can choose which one is appropriate for your situation. Also, just a note, I'm using draw.io in order to create my flowcharts, and it's very, very simple to do that. I've also included this flowchart in the resources section so you can open it up with draw.io and change it or just play around with it if you need to. So in a flowchart, each symbol represents a specific action. Let's go over our flowchart. So as you notice, it starts with this oval shape, so start application, then all the way on the bottom, it says exit application. So our flowchart should have an entry point and an exit point. However you word them doesn't matter as long as they convey the meaning that it starts here and ends there. That's all you need. And then we have our parallelogram shape, which is our input and output. And here we're saying A, B, and operation. I could have done three separate inputs, but I decided to put all of them in one. And this is just our input, two numerical inputs and our operation. Then this is our decision shape. So this will take an input and make a decision based on that input. In this case, it says A is numeric. If it's, if it is numeric, then it'll go here. If it's not, then it'll go there. So it branches out. So then we have our rectangle, which conveys a process. In this case, we're lower casing our operation. In this case, we're adding our inputs. In this case, we're subtracting our inputs. Uh, so, you know, it conveys a process. Now that we know what these symbols mean, let's go over the entire flowchart. So we start our application and we get three inputs, A, B, and operation. Then we make decisions based on those inputs. We say, is A numeric? If it is, then we go here and we make another decision, is B numeric? If it is, then we lowercase the operation. If any one of them is not numeric, then we will show a warning and then we will exit the application. So if everything goes well, right, goes here and we lowercase the operation, then we will start making decisions based on the operation. And we say, is the operation plus or add? Is it minus or subtract? And based on that, we'll either add or subtract and so on and so forth for multiplication and division as well. If we come here and we say, it's not plus, it's not minus, it's not multiply, it's not divide, and we just don't know what it is. And at that point, we should show a warning because we've agreed upon that in our acceptance criteria. If we can't recognize the operation, we just show a warning. And then what it's going to do is, is once again, going to exit the application. So this is our flowchart and see how much easier this is to follow. And also, if you would want to share it with somebody else, it would be much easier to kind of show them and go over it and also take notes on it, right? Because it gives you kind of this bigger picture perspective. One quick thing is you might ask why I have organized my flowchart the way I did. And the answer is because it seemed appealing to me that way. It seemed intuitive to me that way. If you wanted to put these on the right side, you could have done that pretty easily and nothing would have been wrong. The only thing that matters here is the meaning behind the flowchart. So does your flowchart represent a step-by-step -step process that will lead you to your desired solution? If yes, then the flowchart is valid. It would be also nice that it's intuitive and appealing, which is why I organized it the way I did. But that's it for now.